Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we'll see Thevenin's theorem as well as Norton's theorem. And we'll see a standard procedure to solve a network using Thevenin's theorem as well as Norton's theorem. And also, we'll see in this video the beauty of Thevenin's theorem. How and why this Thevenin's theorem is so special compared to other theorems. So all these things will be seen here. So as I said, in this in this lecture, we'll see Thevenin's as well as Norton's. Though it seems like we have two different theorems, but both are almost same. Concept behind Thevenin's as well as Norton's is just the same. A slight difference will be there, that's it. But main content is same. So what is the prerequisite knowledge required? You should know how to find a response. Response by mean current or voltage. You should know how to find that for a given network using our conventional methods, mesh, node, superposition, or any other method for that, for that matters. So you should know this first. And of course, second part is how to find equivalent traces across any two terminals. And we have a video on that also. You can check that video, link in the description below. So how to find resistance between any two points. If you understand these two clearly, that's it. There is nothing much complications with Thevenin's. So let's come to the statement of Thevenin's. Statement says, a linear network consisting of, so it means opening statement itself is a linear network. What does it mean? It is valid only for linear networks. Or you can say it is valid for any linear network. Okay. Okay. So idea behind this is any linear network. So before going to the definition, uh, technical definition, let me give a qualitative view of Thevenin's. Suppose uh, you have in this semester, you have six exams, six end semester exams. What if I combine all these six exams into one exam? So will it be good? Of course, it will be very good, right? So that's the idea. Like I have many things. So I'll combine all these things into just one. So here, what is this technically? Any linear network with many electrical sources, many resistances, many impedances, I will replace all these elements with just one voltage source and one resistor. That's it. So it is as simple as converting all of your exams into one exam. All right. So that's what the statement says. It consists of number of electrical sources, maybe voltage sources or current sources, and resistances or impedances can be replaced by an equivalent voltage source with a series resistor called Thevenin's resistance. That's it. So how do you solve a network using Thevenin's? So I'm giving here a standard processor to solve a given network using Thevenin's. So it will be better if you follow this. It will be very good if you have your own method. All right. So first one is identify the terminals of load, name them as A, B, and redraw the network by removing the load element. Here, the most important thing which all of you miss is redrawing. You are bloody lazy. You won't redraw the network. That's it. You're trapped. You must redraw the network, okay? By removing load element. Important point is, you should use this redraw network always. In step two and step three, you should use only this redraw network, all right? What is step two? You need to find the voltage across open circuit terminals. You've opened the load. And now you'll be finding voltage across open circuit terminals for a redraw network. Okay, so that voltage is also called as Thevenin's voltage. So you may use mesh analysis, node analysis, superposition theorem, or any method to get this step two done. Step three, you convert the given network into pure passive network. What is a passive network? What is an active network? Of course, it is reverse. What is an active network? In a network, if one active source is present, 
if one active element present is in a network, we'll call it as active network. If a network is having no active element, then it is called a passive network. So you need to convert given network into a pure passive network. So what do you do with the electrical sources? I mean, what do you do with the active elements present here? You deactivate them. What do you mean by deactivating? You replace ideal voltage sources with short circuit and ideal current sources with open circuit. If it is a practical source, you replace with their internal resistances. All right. And now find the equivalent resistance. So that's what I said. To understand Thevenin's, you need to know how to find resistance and how to find voltage. I told you this point already, prerequisite. So next, in the third step, you draw equivalent circuit by keeping a removed load element. So you have removed a load element in the first step. Now you'll replace that load element here and you will draw, redraw this simple network. That's it. And you'll solve for desired response, voltage or current. This is a point of note here. What is that? See here, how many steps I'm having to solve a network? I'm having four steps. So what if I take this step only? I can get directly solution by using mesh analysis, node analysis, or superposition theorem. I mean, use step two itself to get the desired answer. I don't have to go for third. I don't have to go for fourth step. I don't have to redraw it. Directly, if I use second step, I'll get the solution. So why I'm unnecessarily doing all these three steps? So Thevenin's is completely useless. I am unnecessarily wasting my time. It is just because it is there in the syllabus. All right? No, that's not the case. That is the beauty of Thevenin's. We'll see that. So let's take a problem. I'm taking this network. In this network, I need to find current flowing through this resistance. If R value is 10 ohms in one case, in second case, R value is 20 ohms. In third case, R value is 50 ohms. So we're asked to find the current in this branch using Thevenin's, let's try. So what are the steps? Let's follow the steps. What is the first step? In the first step, we'll have to redraw the network by identifying the load terminals. Load terminals means what? In this, we're asked to find current. So let me identify this as load. And let me name them as A and B and remove this load element. So I redrawn. Okay. All of you must redraw it. Okay. Otherwise, you'll be confused. First step is done. Pretty simple. Okay. Let's go to second step. What is second step? Find the voltage across open circuit terminals. That is VAB, which is also called as VTH, Thevenin's voltage. So you may use superposition. You may use mesh analysis. You may use node analysis, any method. So you will get some voltage here. In this case, I got 59.96 volts. All right. So step three, transform the given network into pure passive network. So I replace the voltage source with short circuit and I replace the current source with open circuit. So I read down the network like this. You can see this is a question and we read down this. So find the RAB. How to find resistance between two points? We already done a video on this. You can check the description link. So I got here RTHS 10 ohm. Step four, I simply draw the Thevenin's equivalent. This is the Thevenin's equivalent. What is the voltage I got here? 59.96. Amount of resistance I got is 10 ohms. RTH is 10 ohm. 
and this is R. So now we need to find current I. So in the first case, R equal to, first case R is given as 10 ohm. So corresponding current is I is equal to 59.96 by, it is a simple series network. So I can simply do it like this. How much? Very good. 2.998 ampere. What if R equal to, in the second case, second bit what is given? 20 ohm. Then find current I is equal to a simple series network 59.96 by 10 plus 20, how much? Okay, 1.996 ampere. Third bit what is asked? If R equal to, this value is equal to 50 ohm. Then I, yes, by 10 plus 50, 0 point some 99 ampere. All right. So this is how you calculate current using Thevenin's. So what is the advantage? What I said, what is the beauty of Thevenin's? See here, if the value gets changed, this value gets changed from 10 to 20 and 20 to 50. I don't take much time to solve the current. But what if I solve this network using superposition theorem for the time being? If R equal to 10 ohms, I'll be doing complete all the steps for superposition theorem. It's over. Now once this value gets changed to 20, amp, 20 ohm, again I'll have to repeat complete process. Again if it gets changed to 50, again I'll have to solve the complete network. So it will take a lot of time if the R value is changing. But if I use Thevenin's here, it is very simple for me to solve. It is a simple series network. Whatever the value is R, I can solve it now. That's the beauty of Thevenin's. Unless you know this fact, there is no point of solving the problems using Thevenin's. There is no point of you know studying Thevenin's continuously. Okay, I hope now you understand what is the beauty of Thevenin's. Okay, it's not only people are beautiful, these theorems also, concepts also beautiful. All right. Now let's go to Norton's. So again, they're simple. As I said, Thevenin's and Norton's are derived from the same concept. Statement is, a linear network consists of many electrical sources and resistances and impedances that can be replaced by a single current source and a parallel resistor. Previously, voltage source with a series resistor here, current source with a parallel resistor. Okay. So, standard procedure. First step, identify the load, redraw it by removing the load element and replacing it by short circuit. This is the only change. Previously, we have not replaced with anything. Now, we are replacing with a short circuit. Second step, find the current through short circuited path. Previously, we had done voltage across the open circuited terminals. Here, current through the short circuited path. Step three, step three is exactly same as Thevenin's case, okay? Your finding in step three of Norton's, you're finding Thevenin's equivalent resistance and that is called as Norton's equivalent resistance. Step three is exactly the same as earlier one. Step four, yeah, Thevenin's, sorry, Norton's equivalent circuit drawing, I had drawn the Norton's equivalent circuit by connecting current source and this Thevenin's resistance in parallel and here AB terminals, I'll be now putting this AB, the removed load here. All right, let's take a quick look on problem. 
same problem we'll take. Let me solve it by using notons. Step one. So I'm identifying terminals as A and B. This is A and B. I remove the load element and replace it with a short circuit. OK, I replace with a short circuit. It's done. Now, step two, find current IAC using maybe mesh, superposition node, any method. So I got current as 5.966. Next, step three, find the Thevenin's resistance, Thevenin's equivalent resistance. So as circuit is not changed, Thevenin's resistance also will be same, 10 ohms. Next step, I'm redrawing the network. Sorry, I'm constructing not on sequel network with 5.966 ampere is a current. 10 ohms is a RTH. And here, this is R. So we are asked to find current here. So three cases for this R. R first case, R equal to 10 ohm. Then I will get as you simply apply current division rule. If you apply current division rule, you'll get yes, 2.998 ampere. If R is equal to 20 amp 20 ohm, then I equal to again current division rule 1.99 ampere. Again, R is equal to how much? Third case, okay, 50. 50 ohm, I is equal to you will get 0 0.996 ampere. So check the result. In both the cases, you got the same result. That's it. This is not on some evidence. So what do you understand now? We have seen a statement of evidence as well as not ons, and the standard procedure to solve any network using evidence and not ons. Next, we the beauty of Thevenins. Okay, so that's it for today. So for more such a kind of conceptual videos, please subscribe to our channel and please share the videos with your friends. Thank you.